I'm going to calculate the magnetic field of a rotating disk. So let's say the disk is a solid charged disk rotating like this. And I want to calculate the magnetic field uh, along the, ex uh, the axis of the disk, a distance d away from the center of the disk. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a result that we have proven earlier, the magnetic field of a current carrying wire with a current I and a radius of R. So if it's just one wire like that and has a radius R, the magnetic field along the along its central axis, we had gotten with this result. Um, B was equal to mu zero I R squared over two R squared plus X squared to the three halves power. So we had seen that that equation actually makes sense because when we set the X equal to zero, we get um, Magnetic field is equal to mu zero i over, when x equals zero, we have r squared, two r cubed. We get mu zero i over two r, which we know is the magnetic field of a coil, right? And if it has n turns, it's n mu zero i over two r. So the equation makes sense. So now we're going to use that as the basis of a solid disk. So let's say the solid disk has a charge q rotating at a rate of omega. Omega is the radians per second. So uh, what we could do here is say, okay, the solid disk is made up of a bunch of uh, circular charge elements, dq, right, which are rotating uh, per given time with a time t, with a period t. So the current they kind of basically create a current because what is current? It's charge divided by time, right? So the current di created by that one element there, dq divided by the period t, then that's equal to the di. So uh, from uh, physics, we also know that uh, omega is equal to 2 pi f, which equals 2 pi divided by period. Therefore, the period equals 2 pi over omega. So therefore, t di is equal to uh, dq divided by 2 pi over omega. Therefore, di equals uh, omega dq over 2 pi. So that creates its own little current. And the magnetic field of that current will be dB. So I can go to this equation here. And we can call this dB. And then we can call this di. Right? <clears throat> and then we can say uh, dB is equal to di r squared, so dB is equal to mu zero, and then di is going to equal my omega dq r squared over uh, 2 pi. So two, you already have the 2 here. 2 times 2 pi, that's going to be 4 pi. And then you have r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves. Okay. The next thing that we do is going to be uh, to say, okay, dq is equal to sigma dA, the surface charge density. So now I'm going to do it with if the surface charge density is uniform. If the surface charge density is not, not uniform, then you can do techniques that I've shown earlier with uh, potential and electric field of uh, disks where the surface charge density is non-uniform. So uh, you can always put that function there for whatever the surface charge density is. So let's assume it's uniform now. So what's my dA? dA is 2 pi r dr. Uh, it's the circumference of the element times the thickness of the element. So you have sigma is 2 pi r dr. That goes into here. DQ is equal to sigma 2 pi r dr. Okay, now I already have an r squared. Okay, so that's going to make this r cubed. 
right? Because it was 2 pi r dr, and then I already have an r squared. Then on the bottom, I have 4 pi r squared plus x squared to the 3 halves. Now I want to integrate this from what? From 0 to some big R, 0 to some big R, the, whatever the radius of the disk is. My x here is the same thing as what I meant here, distance d. I'm not integrating along the x because I'm trying to find the magnetic field at a certain point. I'm integrating along the r's, right? So my x is just a constant. It's just d. OK? I mean, I could keep it as x. Probably appears better. Um, OK? So now let u equal r squared plus x squared du equals 2r dr, r squared is equal to u minus x squared, okay? So magnetic field here, a lot of things are constant here. 2 pi cancels the 4 pi gives 2. Mu 0 omega sigma, mu 0 omega sigma over 2 cancels out. Then you have integral 0 to r. And then you have here r dr, right? r dr, well, I could split this up into r squared and r dr, right? So it was r cubed. I, I'm splitting it up. r dr is equal to d over 2, OK? This half came, from, came out already, so this is d over 2. And then I have an extra r squared, which is equal to u minus x squared. Okay? And then on the bottom I have what? This whole thing is u. u to the 3 halves. And then the limits of the integral change. So when little r is equal to 0, u is equal to x squared. When little r is equal to big R, uh, u is equal to r squared plus x squared. Okay? So this is actually a doable integral because magnetic field mu 0 omega sigma over 4. And then integral of uh, uh, this one is going to be u to the half, uh, u to the two halves, right? It's a one, so it's going to be u to the negative half minus x squared, u to the negative three halves, a d, uh, du. The equation here for the magnetic field of a disk And then the integral of u to the negative half is u to the half over half, u to the half over half. And then integral of u to the negative 3 halves is u to the negative half over negative half. OK, and then the limits of the integral are x squared to r squared plus x squared. OK, so I could add this. This 2 cancels this, makes it a 2. Mu 0 omega sigma over 2. And then you could put the r squared plus x squared square root plus, and then you have x squared, and then this goes to the bottom. Square root of r squared plus x squared. Then you put this in minus square root of x squared, which is x, minus, <clears throat> this time you have another x squared here over, and then you're putting the x squared on the bottom, right? This is, uh, this is uh, u to the half on the bottom. So when the r, you put r squared plus x squared here, you went to the bottom, then you have an extra x squared, then you did subtract, subtract x squared went into here, gave you x, then you have subtract x squared. This one already is x squared, so you keep it there, and then the x squared goes into the bottom, x squared, and then square root of x squared is just x. So that's actually going to be what? It looks at first as if it's going to cancel, but it's really not. If you keep track of the signs, it's not going to cancel. It's going to give you negative 2x, OK? So that's probably as simple as you can get it. d is equal to mu 0 omega. Now, the sigma is the total charge of the disk divided by the surface area. So q over pi r squared 
square root of r squared plus x squared plus x squared over square root of r squared plus x squared minus 2x. Okay? 